This is sacrum. Identify the parts of the sacrum. This area is called promontory. This is ala on either side of promontory. These are anterior sacral foramina. Sacral nerves come out through anterior sacral foramina. These are transverse sacral lines. Coccyx is attached to this area. Laterally, you get the articular facets for the sacroiliac joints. If you turn it to the posterior side, here you can identify the superior articular processes. This is sacral canal and this is sacral hiatus. These are posterior sacral foramina. This is median sacral crest. These superior articular processes articulate with the inferior articular processes of the fifth lumbar vertebra like this. This is right hip bone. This is the area where it articulates with the sacrum at the sacroiliac joint. This part lying anteriorly is for the synovial part of the sacroiliac joint and this part, this area is for the fibrous part of the sacroiliac joint. If you look at the lateral side of the bone, this part of the hip bone is formed by the ileum up to upper part of the acetabulum here. This is the acetabulum. And this part of the bone is the pubis. And this part is the ischium. If you identify the parts of the ileum here, this is the wing of the ileum. And this area is the body of the ileum. Here is the anterior superior iliac spine. And here is the anterior inferior iliac spine. This is iliac crest. And this area in the iliac crest is called tubercle of the iliac crest. If you turn to the posterior side of the ileum, this area is called the posterior superior iliac spine. And here is posterior inferior iliac spine. If you turn to the medial side of the ileum, this area on the inner aspect is called iliac fossa. This contributes to form the lateral wall of the lower part of the abdominal cavity. If you look at the lateral surface again, this is called superior pubic ramus. This is the body of the pubis, pubis and this is the inferior pubic ramus. This is the ischium. This is the ischial ramus. The whole thing is called ischiopubic ramus here. This is ischial tuberosity. And as I said before, this is the acetabulum. It contributes to form the hip joint together with the head of the femur. On the posterior surface, this is called greater sciatic notch. And here it is lesser sciatic notch. Between the two, there is a bony projection which is broken in this specimen, which is called ischial spine. In the living, with two ligaments present in that area, the greater sciatic notch is converted into a greater sciatic foramen, and the lesser sciatic notch is converted into a lesser sciatic foramen. On the lateral aspect, this area is the acetabulum. With the head of the femur, it forms the hip joint. Below the acetabulum, this large foramen is called obturator foramen. In the living, it is covered with what is called obturator membrane. Between the superior ramus of the pubis and the ileum, this area is called iliopubic eminence. And this inner border of the superior pubic ramus is called pectineal line. And this bony point on the body of the pubis is called pubic tubercle. And here is the pubic crest. 
There are important structures attached to the pubic tubercle and pubic crest. Here, this area is for, for the symphysis pubis. This inner border with the pectineal line contributes to form the, uh, the inlet of the pelvic cavity. This is sacrum and right hip bone. This is how they articulate with each other at the sacroiliac joint. 